Hello, I'm Julia Fisher. Welcome to this week's edition of The Olive Tree, the program that asks the question, what is God doing in Israel and the Palestinian areas today? And where do we, as Christians, fit in? Many Christians visit Israel but never get to meet local believers. If they did, they would discover a movement similar to the early church, a relatively small but growing number of both Jews and Arabs, many of whom are paying a high price for their faith. Just as in Jesus' day, Israel is a land fraught with tension and conflict, with politics appearing to dominate the scene. It's interesting to note Jesus' attitude to the politics of his day. Under Roman jurisdiction, he said little about it and certainly didn't allow it to distract or hinder his work of bringing the kingdom of God to the notice of his listeners, who, incidentally, flocked to hear him. Hence, this programme seeks answers to the question, what is God doing today? Has he finished with Israel, as some Christians think, or is he bringing something to fruition that will impact the nations of the world, as other Christians believe? My guest today is no stranger to conflict. We heard from him on this program just a couple of weeks ago. He is Labib Madanat, Executive Director of the Work of Bible Society in both Israel and the Palestinian areas, including Gaza. He's a Jordanian, Palestinian, Arab Christian who lives in a predominantly Jewish neighborhood of Jerusalem. His passion is to share the gospel with whoever he meets and his challenge is to see reconciliation between Jewish and Palestinian believers. He believes this is God's heart for the region, and that soon Jesus will return for his bride, the Church, a united body of Jews and Gentiles. But is it that easy? When Labib spoke to our tour group in Jerusalem recently, I asked him to explain what reconciliation really means. It's, it's a spiritual thing. Honestly, it is something in the heart, it's something in the mind, it's something in the emotions. It's something even the way our minds would process information will have to change, the renewed mind. And then anything I do will reflect who I am in Christ. So I don't only live the reconciliation when I am in fellowship with my Jewish brother. No. I live the reconciliation with my Jewish brother when I'm in Gaza ministering to Muslims as well. I carry the same heart. I minister. I live that reconciliation. I live this unity. I live God's heart of love to my Muslim brother when I am with my Jewish brothers in Christ as well. It has to be like this. I remember a time when I had to stand and confess in front of my Jewish brothers in Christ. And I tell them, I confess that in the past, when I would go and share Christ with my Palestinian friends, mainly Palestinian Muslim friends, sure, the main talk usually is about politics and the conflict and the land and all these issues. And because I'm a Christian, I want to to gain favor with them and in order to gain favor with them I start hitting on Israel almost saying to them wait a minute I'm a Christian but I'm not a Zionist I'm not a George Bush I am not I'm not which is true I'm none of that I'm a Christian simply I'm in Christ I don't put any more tags to myself other than the identity of Christ Jesus himself but then I start hitting at Israel huh and at the wrong things they do, the occupation, the, 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 and name it, okay? And as if then I gained, wow, whew. Now I gained their ears, and then I start giving them the message of Jesus. We cannot combine love and betrayal together. I cannot love one and betray the other. It does not work. I love both the other way around when I speak to my Muslim friends and they start hitting at Israel and telling me 
of all the difficulties that they face. When I'm in the West Bank and I hear the heartbreaking stories of how the people there are suffering and how they are discriminated against and how their rights are and so on and so forth, I should tell them, ah, but you know, there are Jewish people who are different. There are so and so are different. You know, I know Jewish people who are not like what you say. Not only that, but also it is, as an Arab, Jordanian, Palestinian, Christian believer in Christ, it is my responsibility to confront my people and tell them, yes, our pain is real. Let's talk about our responsibility for what is happening to us as well. Um, supposed occupation will remain for another 1,000 years. What will you do? Will you keep this same repeated tone? Or do we do something different? The body of Christ is God's heart of love and reconciliation, is also God's heart of courage. The prophets, one of the things about the prophets, there is something about him. You always see courage in them. Not condescending, courage with humility, but courage. So we come to the people here on both sides and with courage and love, give them a be representation of the heart of Jesus. Every day here I live, all the experiences I'm going through confirm to me without any doubt that this is the way God wants us to live here in Israel. He wants us to be people of love, reconciliation, and courage. Paying the price, okay. Whatever he asks. But I pray that the mission he is giving us will be so precious in our hearts. Then if and when the time comes to pray, to pay any price, we will see it so small compared to the mission we are called to do. I do not claim myself that I have paid any heavy price. The opposite. I am so, so in debt for God. What I paid, I cannot even, I cannot even say I paid anything. I'm just heaped with the blessings of God. So I'm not going to play the card of self-pity because this is disgrace to God. Self-pity is not one of the <laughs> characteristics of the new man in Christ. No. This defeatism is not of God. I'm between the rock and the hard place. I am so and so. I am so and so. Self-pity is sure but slow suicide. And I say no for it. I come and say, yes, there are challenges. Yes, there are difficult things here and there. But God's grace has been covering us. Heaps of his blessings over us. And what I want to say to God is just bow down before him and say, thank you, Lord. You are faithful. You are always faithful. You cannot be but faithful. And I just want to bow down on my face, honestly, and say, I don't deserve this. I don't deserve this. I, I honestly, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just, I honestly, God, I don't deserve this. But you see, this is God comes to us to change us with his generosity, to woe us with his love. That's his way with us. (laughs) 
Labib Madinat, Executive Director of Bible Society Work in Israel, the West Bank and Gaza, talking to our Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund tour group in Jerusalem recently. You're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher, the program that brings you the voices of both Jewish and non-Jewish believers living in Israel and the wider Middle East to help us understand what God is doing in the region today and what we can do to support them. Over the many years that I've been visiting Israel, I've got to know people like Labib, people who are full of love, a spirit of reconciliation and courage. Believers in Jesus, both Jews and Arabs, who are making a stand and who are paying a heavy price. You know, many of them tell me they feel ignored and overlooked by Christians from the nations who come to visit Israel. My reply is to tell them that's because not many people know they exist. And so this program is here to tell you about the growing number of believers in Jesus in Israel and the PA today a body of people who are emerging rather like the early church did 2,000 years ago. And the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is committed to support them in any way we can. Our vision is to build bridges of understanding and support, in a spirit of reconciliation, between believers in the Holy Land and Christians worldwide. So would you like to join us? You'll find lots of information about the work of the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund on our website, olivetreefund.org. If you'd like to receive our regular newsletter and information about the tours we run and books that are available, please email inquiries at olivetreefund.org. But perhaps you like writing letters, then please write to me, Julia Fisher, Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 8. Five zero, Horsham, RH twelve nine GA. I look forward to hearing from you. Join me again at the same time next week for more news from the olive tree. Until then, thanks for listening and goodbye.